Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of The Android Factor. Today's episode we're going to talk about swipe to dismiss here. We can see this nice little animation that kind of happens. Um, you know, we change some alpha here. Uh, and then obviously if we go ahead and completely swipe away, we actually remove that element from our cart. We now only have one element in our cart. And we did have this delete button here, but it just kind of looks a little clunky. I think it'll free up some real estate for some other things like price. Um, and I think this is just a nice interaction that we should cover anyway. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here we are inside of our cart fragment here, the fragment that fuels this page. And at the bottom of our on view created, we're gonna go ahead and attach an epoxy touch helper to our recycler view here. So we're gonna go ahead and do init swiping. There's both init swiping and init dragging to basically allow for drag and drop or reorder within a list. But we're gonna do init swiping. Uh, this needs the recycler view, so we're obviously going to give it that. And then there's a couple of functions here we need to call, so I'm just gonna put them on a new line. Um, you can allow for swiping left and right. In our case, we're gonna do a swipe right to dismiss. The with target here is going to allow you to specify either a particular epoxy model or a list of epoxy models that you want to be swipeable, which is really helpful. Ours is called the cart item epoxy model that we care for here, and then we just need to call class.java. And then we just need to provide our callbacks here. We need to provide an instance of the epoxy touch helper dot swipe callbacks. I'm actually just going to go ahead and say this, and then we can go ahead and uh, implement this interface on the fragment itself. So epoxy touch helper dot swipe callbacks on our cart item epoxy model. Okay, it looks like this is a problem here. I thought this was an interface, but actually it seems that it is an abstract class. Uh, and so because obviously our fragment extends fragment, we cannot extend another uh, class here. We can only implement additional interfaces. Uh, so we are just gonna go ahead and declare an object that extends uh, this. And then we can just go ahead and actually fill in the blanks here. So the only function that we actually need to implement is on swipe completed. And it basically provides you the particular model uh, and then the view itself and a few other pieces of information here to basically let you know that the swipe on a particular element has kind of completed. So in our case, when we're swiping to the right here, um, it looks like we had to clean up a little bit of UI stuff, but uh, as we're swiping to the right here, we basically are removing the element from the list here. So we are just gonna go ahead and more or less run the exact same code that is inside of our controller to handle the delete action. Delete action right here. So go ahead and copy that. We'll go back into our fragment and we're just gonna go, uh, we're gonna wrap this in the model question mark dot let because uh, we obviously need the epoxy model to basically gain a reference to the UI product in cart and then eventually get all the way down to the ID there. So let's just go ahead and run this here. We'll see what we got. And so rerunning things, we can go ahead and put an item or two in the cart, and then we can go ahead and just like that, we are actually uh, very easily updating our cart. We see we went from two to one uh, and then down to zero and, and our empty state kicked in. So we do know that this logic is working correctly. Uh, and so this is basically the bare bones. Epoxy makes it pretty simple to get it up and running. It's not too much and it has a lot of uh, parameters that you can just change really easily, changing right to left, change, supporting both left and right, and maybe even doing something different based upon what direction they swipe them in. Pretty interesting stuff, but for right now, I guess this demonstrates kind of the bare bones approach for what we need. Now, uh, we saw in the beginning of the episode, though, that there is a little bit more, I don't know, intelligence to it or made it look a little nicer, so we can go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Let's get some more real estate here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put a text view. I have it zero DP, zero DP. And basically going to just put a text view behind this view right here uh, that has that caterpillar in it, which is where the product shows up. So let me just configure some things because XML is not the most fun to watch. Okay, and very cool here. We have set up our text view here, gave it an ID, zero DP, zero DP. Background rounded 12 so that it matches this uh, kind of roundedness that we're looking for. We give it a color of that red that we care for. Uh, and then everything else is pretty simple here. Text color, size, and the actual text. And then we just constrain it basically all around to this particular view here. 
So then we can just go ahead and uh, rerun things here and we should have our little delete logo or a little delete text kind of appearing behind the scene. So as we go ahead and put some elements in the cart here, we can go ahead and swipe and we'll notice that um, it's not there, right? So the problem here is if we take a look at the whole you know XML structure here, we basically have one view, right? We have this constraint layout that is the root view for the entire uh, epoxy model. And this text view is just a child of, it's just an element of it. So when we go ahead and swipe to dismiss, epoxy is moving that entire view and this text view is part of that view. So it's just sliding and it just so happens to be perfectly behind the image. So it makes it appear like there's nothing there. So what we'll actually need to do is kind of update some logic here. And fortunately, epoxy has a wonderful way of doing this. So there's a handful of functions that we can uh, override here. But if we take a look at our on swipe progress changed, it'll actually return to us a float about the swipe progress. And so that will go from zero all the way to one when it goes completely off screen and when the swipe completes. We can use this to our advantage to know that A, this row is moving, and B, to know by how much, right, or how far along it is. Uh, let's see, what we're gonna want to do here is we're actually going to wanna prevent the translation on a particular view here, right? Because that's what's actually happening. Uh, so what we can do here is we can make use of our item view that it provides us we can find the view by its ID. It is a text view, but we're not gonna modify it as a text view, so there's no reason to necessarily cast it as a text view. Um, what do they call it? Swipe to dismiss text view. We can go ahead and call apply here. And so let's just go ahead and set something here where we can say translation X is going to equal, let's just go with negative item view dot translation X. And so the idea here is that while this view moves from left to right, the red view will not move whatsoever. I need to change the text color there, or the, the text gravity there, this is wonderful. But basically as this thing moves, as this overarching uh, constraint layout moves, we're setting the translation equal to the negative amount of that. So no matter how far this thing moves, the red view there, the delete view, is not moving whatsoever because it's calculating the same position every time, right? And then as we swipe to dismiss, we can see that all of it goes away. So let's just go ahead real quick and add the gravity center uh, attribute to our XML so that we get the text in the middle. Uh, and then that'll just kind of put the text in the middle so we're not really gonna have too, too much there, but too, too much to see, but now we can kind of see Perfect, we're getting back to that realm. And so this is totally fine. Uh, you could probably leave this as is. You, we could have the whole entire view behind it be red so that it just looks like it's swiping, uh, you know, basically trying to avoid this gap, right, between the red and now this image here. Uh, but we can do a little bit of math to basically allow it that once it hits this point where they're basically the same, that the red starts to move with it and then it looks like the entire view starts to go here. So instead of actually saying a hard-coded value here, we can basically translate this into the, we want to define the maximum value between either this thing moving uh, just a little bit, or at this point, which is just going to be the overall width of that image view, of that red view, um, and so that it'll just continue to basically move with it once it reaches a certain point. Once it once this entire view moves the full width of that image view, which will be like right here, these views will kind of touch, then they start to move together after that. And so basically we can use this max function here to, to accomplish that, right? So the maximum between the translation that the uh, constraint layout has moved or the measured width of this view, which also just so happens to be the size of uh, this image view, this product image view. And I forgot to put a negative here. Sorry about that. So you can just go ahead and rerun that. And now our math should work out. Yep, wonderful. So we see that it basically waits until this whole thing has been exposed and then it starts to move together. So sorry if that was a little difficult for me to explain, um, but uh, that's the concept there. So let's see. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so 
this was that UI bug that we had, and I believe mm -hmm, the translation X, so it's still being moved, it's basically not resetting. But then the second we touch it, it does reset as it should. So I think we can just go into the uh, actual model itself and kind of set that back. So let's just see if that fixes it real quick. The swipe to dismiss text view dot translation X equals zero. I want to see if that fixes our problem. Wow, those changes applied pretty quickly. Okay, so we dismiss that. And then if we add another one in, yep, we see that it's not bleeding anymore. It's not leaking that view. Wonderful. Um, and then, yeah, we just work as we are expected to here. So that's pretty convenient. Uh, wonderful, we're not leaking anything. This is great. Go ahead. Yeah, we can see the deletion actually working there as far as animating properly. I guess the last little bit here is we can just clean up the on delete clicked because there's basically no reason for it. We can just get rid of our delete icon. Hope I'm not using it for any other constraints. It looks like I am. So let me just clean this up real quick. All right, so I've gone ahead and cleaned up that epoxy model or sorry, the layout. Gone ahead and removed that as well. And then obviously we have inside of our controller, we have a delete clicked here, which we no longer need. Uh, and that's super wonderful. I think that's basically about everything. Um, the other thing that you may have noticed in the demo in the beginning was setting some kind of, it looked like the little fade animation. Um, and that's actually extremely easy to accomplish here because of this swipe progress declared as a float. So let's just see how this looks. Yep, so we have no longer, we have the delete item. You know, I guess maybe we'll need to figure out a way to maybe say you can swipe to delete uh, because now they look like they can't, you know, no other way to remove it from the cart, but that's okay. We know for the sake of this uh, app here, we know how to get rid of it. But, um, you know, on this view here, we can very easily just say our alpha equals, uh, let me just show you real quick. I guess we could just use the swipe progress and that works, but a little bit of a caveat. So now that we have applied our changes here, we can see that we can see it's starting to fade in like very slowly. And the problem is it's not going to get fully faded in until it's completely done, right? Because this entire swipe progress goes from zero to one and so does our alpha. So in order to kind of speed up that um, progress here, we can just multiply our swipe progress by three, which means we only have to make it a third of the way basically in order for uh, the actual view to have alpha value of one, right? So we can see that it actually starts to become red pretty quickly. And once we get past a third of the overall width that we need to move, we could see that we're now at like that one uh, alpha ratio. So we're all good. I'm even gonna make it for maybe five, I don't know, just so that it kind of happens a little bit quicker. Um, but that's basically it. We can really make use of our, uh, yeah, that's not too bad. We can really make use of a lot of the parameters that get passed into us to make some very interesting interactions. One of which is our translation and another one is alpha. If we wanted to get crazy, we could change rotation. We could do a whole bunch of things. Actually, we can go ahead and set our rotation to be 360 times our swipe progress. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously extremely goofy. <laughs> but that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, it works, I guess. Uh, definitely a little ridiculous. Maybe something more reasonable would be our scale X here. So it kind of... Interesting. Yeah, so we're gonna you'd have to do a little bit of math here to actually figure it out and make it uh, Feel appropriate although that it has an interesting animation there that it feels like it's kind of coming out from behind the view uh, But obviously it starts to stretch and get a little ridiculous. So uh, I'm gonna leave that to you guys if you want to pull the code There is a code uh, all on github. You can find a link in the description of the video and that's about it. Everything else should work properly, so we don't really have any other issues here. Uh, this was just simply overlaying swipe to delete on top of what we already had. So appreciate you watching the video. Please comment down in the comments, real fan, if you made it this far in the video. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.